Hey there, welcome back to Scribbles and Ink Stains. My name is Mary and this, it has been a hot minute. Um, I thought the perfect excuse to come back on and film some content is a tag video that I've been meaning to reply to for some time. It is the eight pen question tag. And I was reminded yesterday when I saw Leanne Likes and Simone's follow-up video. Yesterday was my first day of summer break. Uh, yeah, I'm rocking the summer break look. I'm about to go out for a walk and I thought, no, don't go out for a walk until you actually film something. So that was my little pep talk to myself. Yeah, let's jump into this tag. I will cut this video into eight chapters and actually I should probably preface it with an additional question, where have I been? Because I sort of went MIA since our spring break. For those of you who don't know, and I'll cover this pretty quickly, I teach high school English. Um, but what you don't know is that one of my colleagues quit right before spring break and I volunteered to pick up her, her three classes. So for the past 10 weeks, I've been teaching twice the typical coursework. And that's not something I'll ever do again. It seemed to be the thing to do since the principal wasn't hiring at the time for the final quarter of the year, basically. Um, and it was kind of fun, um, but I will, I will never do that again, note to self, uh, because I really ended up completely exhausted at the end of not just every day, but that really spilled over into my weekend time, into my hobby time, into my journal time withdrew into myself and entered survival mode and I survived. Anyway, let's look at these eight pen questions. Question one, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? My fountain pen journey began in about 2012. I was teaching classical art at a private atelier. That's why my husband and I moved up to North Carolina. And we used to make our own walnut ink and do, it's a very academic kind of program where you work from the old masters, you do a lot of copying, two-dimensional works, and then you move into working from plaster casts, and then all that culminates in working from a live model. I am in my studio now. You can see kind of some color studies in the background and lots of books over here. So this is, the studio is all of the different identities that I have with that classical art and with journaling and with writing and with reading and just all of the, those are all of my creative juices. So walnut ink, I have a little vial right here. This is homebrew walnut ink. Will maybe hold that up to you. You can see how faint that ink is, it's, again, it's quite old, but having a light wash like that really allows you to build up your values very slowly, whether you're hatching with goose quills. It was not long after working with goose quills that I decided, oh, there, surely there are more modern tools. So I did amass a small collection of drawing nibs and it was a short leap to fountain pens. This is a Platinum Preppy, from that era, you can see the, I think you can see that this used to have a purple coating on the nib, but walnut ink is quite corrosive and that coating peeled away pretty quickly. But the pens still work. I would just eyedropper them and work up tonal drawings with ink hatching and washes. Yeah, I'll insert some of that artwork somewhere around here. From that point, I think it took about a week and a half for me to purchase my first Lamy all-star and this is my the original this is the start of the real fountain pens when i decided i was going to upgrade from the platinum preppies and move into fountain pens and fountain pen inks favorite ink in the beginning i really enjoyed the j urban i have quite a few from that era during that era it was really the more neutral inks the drawing inks the inks that were meant to get into that tonal range of old master drawings and studies from 19th century drawings my go-to inks now are all of the above uh, seriously, if you've seen any of my content, I feel like you know I'm ink obsessed. And 
I love them all. I love shimmers. I love sheening inks. I love them all because I'm really comfortable breaking down my fountain pens, pulling the nibs and the feeds. I figure I can't get into that much trouble and I haven't broken or caused any hairline cracks yet. My go-to inks now are probably because I'm, I've been falling in love with my pilot pens. My go-to inks now tend to be the Roshizuku's. Just this past weekend we had the smallish pen show, the triangle pen show up in Raleigh, which is about an hour and 20 minutes north of here. Yes, I was a total fangirl geek and saw Drew Brown of Goulet Pens right there at the entrance to the hotel and did not hesitate to run up to him and tell him what a big fan I am and asked him for a selfie and he was so generous and kind and first of all kudos to Goulet for sending somebody to a local pen show that's not a small drive from Richmond down to Raleigh and traffic can be heinous uh, on 95. Yeah I really appreciate that he came even though they didn't have a table he was just there to meet people and represent the Pencast and Goulet Pen. So I thought that was super cool. And I got a selfie because I am shameless like that. Or at least I can channel that personality when I need to. Question three, how have your ink and pen taste changed over time? I feel like much like the inks, I kind of tiptoed towards gold nibs and then jumped off that cliff pretty hard. I think the main thing with my pen taste is that they are pretty expansive, but I am learning to focus more on what I'm actually interested in. What I really love is sort of represented by two pens. First Pilot 743 that I ever purchased was this one. I've never even done an unboxing or a writing sample or anything. This pen is the perfect fit for my hand. I love the nib. This one is a soft medium. The cigar shape, I feel like you might think it's boring, but I just think this is so classy and maybe that's kind of my traditional art training coming through. As far as luxury and elegance and aesthetics, I feel like I tend to the simpler and the more streamlined. That said, my taste can also expand to include the modern and the colorful. This is the Esterbrook Esty, and I've just found that they're very similar in size and weight. Of course, the Pilot has a gold nib and the Esterbrook does not, although they do have gold nibs currently available. I almost hold the Esterbrook in higher esteem because you can swap out the nibs. This number six Yowo, all you need to do is, note to self, that pen has ink in it, all you need to do is unscrew the nib and replace that nib feed, feed unit. In fact, this is the journaler nib. It is not the original nib that I bought the pen with. I just bought originally with a medium nib. Question number four, are there inks or pens that you haven't tried but that you would like to try? Of course, pen shows are such an amazing opportunity. The Triangle Show is minuscule compared to San Francisco or Washington DC, but I uh, had some nib work done by Kirk Spear of Pen Realm and he had a display of Twisbees, each one loaded with a different one of his grinds. And so just by virtue of trying them, I was able to really narrow my focus on just the pens and nibs that I know I love and work with the way I write and are comfortable to me. So I have definitely have thoughts on a couple of his grinds. His 60 degree architect for me is just chef's kiss. What an experience, what a treat to be able to see him do his work. And to round out question number four, what I would like to try but haven't would be some vintage nibs. That feels like a dangerous new rabbit hole that I don't necessarily want to go down. Because at that point, I feel like my house would sink under the weight of all of my hobbies and all of the just clutter in the studio. What is your holy grail pen? My holy grail mass-produced pen would be anything in the Pilot Custom Heritage series with a size 10 or 15 nib. I find the quality control with the 
Pilot is hands down my favorite. Little touches that I've never found Pilot cut corners on that I do find Sailor does. Right there, I can feel this seam on the grip. It's not a crack, it's on both sides. It is where that those two pieces of resin were sealed together. They did not polish that up and that just irritates me. When you pay that much for a pen, why would they not follow through on something so simple? And I've just never had that issue with any of my pilot pens. Question six, how many pens do you currently own? Let's just say I have uh, outgrown my 40 pen Galen leather pen case. Every slot is full and I have other pens laying on my desk and loaded into my Rickshaw Sinclair. So I'm not going to count them <laughs> other than to say I've got seven of my really beloved high-end pens in this case and then that 40 pen case is full and whatever four on my desk how do i feel about that i feel okay with that i do intermittent fasting so i'm pretty comfortable dipping into periods of abstinence of limiting myself of focusing less on acquisition on trying to wean myself away from the that dopamine fix that we all seem to crave so much in this hobby and others i'll probably do a video coming up soon of pens that I'm ready to call for my collection and I'll talk about some of my thought processes in that video with that selection. But I feel like there are at least 12 that I'm willing to let go of that I'd like to sell. Question seven, do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know that you have reached your maximum? I feel like I'm at a good number with my pens. I'm in it for all the inks. I'm in it for all the ink characteristics. I'm in it for sample sizes, two mil, four mil, bottles, you name it, bring on the ink. I also don't hesitate to purchase bottles if I know I love an ink. And that's because there are a lot of pen friends out there. I just love developing relationships with pen friends and there aren't a lot here in my community. If any, what bottles allow me to do is sort of virtually cultivate some of those relationships with pen friends through ink swaps. People are reaching out to each other and deciding to swap with each other just on a much more casual basis, which is probably more sustainable um, for everybody. So I love that. All of my inks are on the website Fountain Pen Companion. Check it out. I'll put my handle across the screen here. But if you're interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one ink swap, reach out to me in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. I'll put my handle here on the screen. And yeah, I would love to trade inks with you. You could either keep it random or be more selective. Yeah, I would love to do that. And for the next two months, I actually have time in my life to follow through. Okay, and that brings us to question number eight. Consequently, what would you do if another pen came into your life? I would welcome it in the door, feed it, and take care of it. Give it baths when it needed, and love it like a child. That's what I would do. So this is fun. I enjoyed popping on face to face, even though I'm a little bit in my grubby vacation state of mind. Um, my next video will be currently inked for June. All of these little beauties right here. This was a wonderful way to kind of throw out conversational lines and I really enjoyed watching all of your content. If you have done the tag video, I have watched it and enjoyed it. If you want to carry on the conversation, leave your comments below. I really appreciate your time. If you're new here, please consider hitting like if you love inky fountain pen content, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.